um, ahead of his bankruptcy, the restaurant began shuttering 93 locations. A mix of underperformance issues, financial pressure from inflation, strategic realignments, changing consumer trends, and overall cost-cutting objectives have contributed to the recent wave of location closures across several restaurant chains in 2024. Now, I never understood how Red Lobster was staying open anyway. You know, you always hear people talk about fake food, but was Red Lobster like I, I don't I'm not a big fan of seafood. I had some fish this weekend. I don't know what it was. It just looked cool on the menu. So I ordered it. But is Red Lobster supposed to be like upscale? Is this somewhere I could take a woman between the ages of 28 and 35? Could I take her to Red Lobster and be OK with like, a you know, what I'm saying a little first little, you know, what I'm saying first encounter? Because I I've, I went to Red Lobster twice in my life, and I only had, like, some biscuits when I was in there. But Major chains including TGI Fridays, Mod Pizza. Mod Pizza is good. Outback Steakhouse. Outback is good. Applebee's cited underperformance. I told y'all about this girl that I was talking to back when I was, like, 21. She worked at Applebee's and stole my hoodie. The hell with Applebee's. Cited underperformance as the main reason for closing certain restaurant locations. They are strategically strategically shuttering. Why shuttering? Hey, just say closing stores. Who says shuttering stores that are not meeting sales and profit expectations? Hell no, it's a Chuck E. Cheese for adults. Oh, so y'all seeing Red Lobster ain't it? So, okay, I can't go to Red Lobster. I mean, I would never if I would never going to go to Red Lobsters anyway, but it is what it is. Uh, underperformance in meeting sales and profit expectations. You would think Applebee's is meeting that, man. I mean, with inflation, because uh, Applebee's used to be able to get like that two for 20. Then they had like that that three appetizer for 15. I ain't gonna lie, I used to be in there blowing a check. It's like Sizzlers. Whoa, wait a minute, Lily. Wait a minute. Sizzlers was the shit. We going to Sizzlers. We going to Sizzlers. Hey, Sizzlers used to be the spot. You go in there, they got they on the grill, they making steaks for you in there. Sizzlers, you, you go into Sizzlers, that means dad had a good week at work. You going into damn like what was that? We had Ryan's, like those little uh buffet places. Now those places were low level, but you go into Sizzlers, oh, they be on the grill. You're not gonna disrespect Sizzlers now. Uh, other chains like Boston Market, Red Lobster, Tijuana Flats have closed locations due to severe financial troubles, unpaid bills, landlord disputes, and even bankruptcy filings. Their closures are directly tied to efforts to cut costs and restructure amid money problems. Discovery Zone? My sister used to work in Discovery Zone. She used to work in the Discovery Zone, and uh, an hour before she get off, my mom would go up there. This was she was like 17. An hour before my sister got off at Dis uh, Discovery Zone, me and my brother would go in there and say, hey, we're looking for Tanika. And they're like, oh, she's in the back. Man, we wouldn't even go get my sister. <laughs> we would go get in the play place. we play around till she got off. Uh, Disney specifically cited inflation-related challenges, like higher costs as a factor for us, forcing it to close 57 locations in 2023. Now, if you guys didn't know, I do reviews on google maps i'm a level eight on google maps and there's only 10 levels i did a google review on denny's man it's got like two million damn uh it's got like two million views on it i'm kind of a big deal on google maps <laughs> let me see yeah my profile i'm a level guy eight out of ten Let me see where my Denny's review is at so far. Hey, Google, y'all got to lower the damn limits, man. Y'all talking about I got to add a hell of pictures just to get on there. But anyway, I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, Disney's uh, Disney. Denny specifically cited inflation-related challenges. Let's see what they talk about there. Inflation-related challenges. Like higher costs as a factor forcing it to close 57 locations, 
planning to close 10 to 20 more in 2024, according to a February earnings call. All right, we're going to jump around real quick, see what Denny's is talking about. Denny's shuttered dozens of restaurants last year. Here's why. Um, all right, we did the 15, February 13th. They noted that even though inflation slowed in 2023, thanks Joe Biden for slowing that down for us, soaring costs still took a major toll on its restaurants. A Denny's location used to have to generate $1 million in order to stay open. But lately, the benchmark has increased to $1.2 million due to inflation. Yeah, well, y'all better get to work. Shit, a lot of people still eating at Denny's. Depending on where you're from, Denny's ain't really like in the South. It's like more of a Denny's is more like the white version of the Waffle House. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what you can compare Denny's to. It's like the white version of Waffle House. You go in there, there's a lot of old people, but you know it is what it is. Uh, some restaurant closers have been driven by shifts in uh, in customer preferences and dining behaviors. Everybody think they rich now. Everybody want to go to some fancy place to eat. Not me, though. I try to keep my meals below $50. That have made certain locations less viable. For chains facing financial headwinds, closing underutilized locations is a way to reduce costs and to soar up their finances through rest uh, restructuring. My bad. Shit, the last time I ate at Denny's, the last time I ate at Denny's was in 20, 2022 during the pandemic. That was the last time. Because I remember I was just sitting in the bed one day. It was before we had a live. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to order some Denny's. And I ordered it. And I wanted to get out the house because this is like the end of the pandemic. I just wanted to get out the house. So I ordered some food, went and picked it up. Stopped by the, uh, the gas station. A couple junkies out there. Had to do a spin move on them niggas because they was asking for money. I'm like, hey, bro, I ain't got nothing, man. I ain't got nothing. But you never want to pump gas and go in the store at the same time. It's either you go to the gas station and pump gas and leave, or you go straight to the store and go in. You never do both at the same time in California. One, niggas is going to rob you. Two, the bums are going to harass you. So you don't ever want to have too much talking time between. Like if you pump your gas and then you walk to the front door, Oh, the bums in California, they own you. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, nigga, get the fuck out my face, man. And you got to watch yourself because you might have to fight a bum in California. So if you just go into the gas station, just pull up to the gas station and go straight in. Either look down at your phone, make sure you lock your door first. Look down at your phone or be determined. You know what I'm saying? Have them blinders on. There's shit you got to do in California to get in and out. Cause you don't want to walk back to the car because this will get the bum time to be aggravated that you ain't got no money to get this bum ass nigga no money by the time you get back to your car and these niggas follow you. And if you ain't got that thing on, you gotta grab that motherfucking stick that you wipe the windows off and beat this nigga's ass to get them away from you because they don't care out there. And bums be in suits. So you never know who's a bum in California. They be having cell phones, all kinds of shit. All right. List of fast casual restaurants shuttering eateries. Cracker Barrel. All right. Oh, I was about to say they got high yield over there. Cracker Barrel, the Southern Country themed restaurant chain, will close four locations this year, including two in California, one in Oregon, and another in South Carolina. Buffalo Wild Wings. I don't know. We're going to see what Cracker Barrel talking about. Uh, So Cracker Barrel is closing four locations, two in California. Oh, that ain't that bad, though. When you think about the whole United States, how many how many Cracker Barrels are there? They only close them four. As a standard course of business, we continually evaluate, evaluate the performance of our stores using various criteria to ensure we are meeting the needs of our guests and our business. Cracker Barrel said in a statement to Food Outlet, eat this, not that. The decision to close a store is never one we take lightly. And our focus right now is on assisting our impacted employees during this transition. 
So what they gonna do? Give them a severance pay or what, what are they gonna do? Y'all can barely stay open. How y'all gonna help the, the employees that are impacted? For over a year, the chain has experienced a downward trend in the number of customers visiting their establishments. The leadership at Crackle Barrel has cited several potential reasons behind the decline. Weak marketing, a guest experience gap, and cost conscious customers. Crackle Barrel was actually pretty good, though, to be honest with you. Crackle Barrel, it, it was all right. It's kind of dark in there. Do you know what I mean? Like, they got, like, candles and shit. It's like, maybe if y'all turn the lights on. If you cut back, you know when you go in the, the beginning of Crackle Barrel? They have all this nonsense in there. Like, why Why do you have stuff in here that we, we can buy? Like, no one wants to buy candy from Crackle Barrel. No one's going to buy. I've never seen anyone. Put a one in the chat. If you know someone that bought one of those rocking chairs out the front of Crackle Barrel, you know they got all those rocking chairs lined up. Who's ever bought one of those? Like, who said, man, you know what? Let me throw one of those in the back of my truck today. That's why they losing money. They got all that bullshit. They selling teddy bears. They selling books. Ain't no one buying that shit. All I know is whenever I went to Crackle Barrel, I was seeing people in there stealing shit, putting candy in their pocket, just running out. They weren't even getting tables. They just going in there to look around. You giving them too many options. Cut back on all this extra bullshit and just sell the food. RD said I did. I'm just saying, I ain't never bought. RD, you need to take a picture of your rocking chair and put it in the Discord so we can verify that we know somebody that actually bought a Cracker Barrel rocking chair. And what are they going for? Like a hundred something dollars? Man, if y'all want me to build y'all a rocking chair, I can I can make one for you. <laughs> hey, the country fried steak was cool. I love getting the breakfast out of there. The syrup was a little, it was a little watery, but they pancakes were good. Crackle Barrel pancakes are good. It just they got a lot of like slavery themed shit on the walls. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Renee, Miss Renee, the rocking chairs that are out front, they're for sale. You can sit in them. You can buy those. Those rocking chairs are for sale. <laughs> Cause I know one time I sat in, I was like, man, what the hell keep hitting my neck? But it's the little thing on there. You can buy it. 15 years ago. Oh, 15 years ago. That might be worth something. It might be worth like shit. With inflation, that might be like worth $30, $45 now. I could definitely use a rocking chair though. Let's see. Let's see how much those rocking chairs are. We're here. How much? God. It's say between 200 and 300 a cracker a cracker a cracker a cracker barrel rocking chair typically costs between 200 and 300 dollars. That's a pretty healthy price tag for a chair when they ain't selling shit. But it's also important to remember that these chairs are built to last. Well, RD did tell us 15 years ago she got hers. They're made from higher quality materials and construction, so they should be able to withstand years of use. Okay, here we go, right here. Cracker Barrel rocking chairs. Your grandpa bought three. Well, you live in Oklahoma, man. Y'all want some two fifty nine, two eighty nine? This is why they can't stay in business. Ain't no one buying this shit. It probably take y'all about a hundred dollars, hundred and fifty dollars to build them. Oh, you can get the set right here. Two of them in a the chair. Six fifty. The Jefferson Mission rocking chair. That's probably one I get. That one got some cushion on it. Yeah, CRD said around that time it was a hundred. So if they shut down, yours might be worth like two eighty, two ninety, maybe. You got the white one. This one up here, the ladder, the ladder back rocker, or. Yeah, you seen now. Nah, this is what you seen like right here, the white slap one. 
Oh, yeah, that white slap right there. That look good right there. This look like the one Massa be sitting in. When you outside working and Massa, he chilling before he get on your ass, he get up out that rocker right there. Oh, shit. You hear that? The rocker, stop. Get back to work. Couldn't be no nigga on the nag back then if Massa had the white slap rocking chair. He's on your ass. All right, well, look at that. We just, matter of fact, someone give me Cracker Barrel's HQ number. We cut back on selling the bullshit. We could make some money. Those rockers just be sitting out there. Ain't no one buying that shit. I know they not selling clothes. Look at, man, I did not know Cracker Barrel had a whole website just to buy shit. Let me see what they got in the men's clothing now. Oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, this ain't nothing that uh, our people will wear. Look at this shit right here. You going straight to a damn Trump rally with this on right here. Proud to be an American. <laughs> they put the flag on top of the Constitution. July 4th, 1970, I mean, 1776. Add some patriotic pride to your closet with our flag polo shirt. The short sleeve American print knit polo features a knit collar, three button placket, and a square hem bottom with uh, bottom with side vents. Nigga, side vents. Nigga, what you about to be doing? <laughs> what up, Brillo? Oh man, I did not look. This is why Cracker Barrel ain't making no fucking money. Look at all this personal care they got. Oh my god, they got. Warmy marshmallow gray eye mask. Hey, Cracker Barrel, get rid of this website and just stick to food. Oh, man, they got military clothing. Let me see what they got. Man, they better not disrespect my Air Force with this. Let me see what this eagle looks like. We continue. Oh, hell no. This is not the legitimate Air Force right here, y'all. I don't know what this is. This is the chair force. This ain't us, man. This no nah, hell no. Nah. Fly fight window. All right, let's get out of here. Crackle Barrel's tripping. Crackle Barrel is tripping. All right, let's go down to Applebee's. Applebee's Dime Brands Global. All right, we need to look up them and see who all they own. Dime Brands Global, parent company to Applebee's, announced in the fourth quarter earnings call that the restaurant chain will be shuttering 25 to 35 locations across the U.S. this year after closing 33 in 2023. These closures aren't a sign of struggling financiers, well, franchise franchisees applebee's president tony yeah we ain't even gonna try that tony m told investors they're offering a sign of struggling trade areas and i can assure you that our leadership team we're pulling every lever we have to offset the downside of closings all right dying together this kind of look like my sister Cherise. So Dine owns Applebee's. Fuzzy Taco Shop. Oh, they own IHOP. So they got IHOP and Applebee's. Oh, they getting some money, though. 13 million boneless buffalo wings a year. Three million stakes a year. Uh oh. Look at this, y'all. Number one date spot in America. All right, ladies, listen up. When I come back, if they got two for 20, listen, on 10 different occasions, I could take 10 different women out. We're going to do it's not a speed dating, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a medium dating. So you got one hour with me, 
we're gonna go blow 20 25 dollars on the two for 20 two for 25 see if we can get there doing a happy hour and get us some margaritas we're gonna go to the number one dating spot and we're gonna go up to applebee's we're gonna go to applebee's that's the number one dating spot in america so i don't want to hear nobody saying oh ew applebee's it's the number one date spot number one 13 years in a row all right that's cool so applebee's is saying these are not closing because of struggling finances it's just uh they're trying to offset the downside of closings yolanda said um Ain't gonna work for me cheap. Oh man, listen. Cheap is my middle name. You know, when I was born, the first word I said wasn't I, I know I lied to y'all the other day, well, a couple of months ago. Daddy pow pow. You know what I'm saying? When I talk about daddy, give me the gun, mama, give me the gun. Those were those were like my first statements, but my first word was cheap, cheap, cheap. Nah, you can get those. so with the two for twenties at Applebee's, you get an appetizer. You get uh, one appetizer and two meals. Apple, bees, two for what is it? Two for twenty or two for twenty five? I know it ain't went up to twenty five dollars. Two for twenty five. Yeah, Applebee's got a healthy menu. Applebee's got a, a vegan menu. View current promotion. No. All right, I'll view the promotion, nigga. Ooh, mozzarella sticks for 50 cents. Wait, one mozzarella stick is 50 cent? Man, they trying to whoop niggas' asses. Let me see something. I'm trying to figure out how to keep these fools in business. Here you go, Kendall. Ir Irresistibles. Irresistibles, my bad. They got salads here. Oh, they got the two for two X. What is this? Item is uh, unavailable. Irresistibles. Okay, they got a Tex Mix scrimp bowl, Southwest chicken bowl. Come on, Applebee's. Y'all could. Man, y'all gonna be all right. All right, so Applebee's is just shutting just to shut down. Uh, TGI Fridays. That's the next one we have on here. So TGI Fridays. I've only ate at TGI Fridays one time that I can confirm. And that was with this woman named Lynette. Now, Lynette lives down in Georgia now. I think she's married. Got like three kids. Beautiful. She was a grade up under me. She went to my rival school. Now, me and her really couldn't talk like we wanted to because i was beefing with the niggas at that school so i couldn't like be over in that area you know what i'm saying but we went to tgi friday she flew up to kansas city one time after she moved and you know we went up there did our little wham bam i forgot what they even had up there but tgi fridays announced in the company statement in january that it would close 36 underperforming locations in select markets across the united states the restaurant chain offered more than 1,000 transfer opportunities, which represented over 80% of the total impacted employees. So uh, 1,000 uh, transfer opportunities. So what they do, send them to another one? Like how many TGI Fridays are there in one location? Our top priority has always been delivering a superior experience for each and every TGI Friday's guests, and we've identified opportunities to optimize and streamline our operations to ensure we have the best position to meet and exceed the brand promise. Ray Risley, the president and CE, I mean COO, chief operating officer at TGI Friday's, said in a statement, by strengthening our franchise model, in closing underperforming stores, we are creating an unprecedented opportunity for Fridays to drive forward its vision for the future. Now, I've never seen anyone go to TGI Fridays. TGI Fridays is like the it's like the less cool Applebee's and Chili's. Like when you think of like those restaurants that started popping up in the 2000s, TGI Fridays was like the little brother. You got Chili's, you got Applebee's. They up here competing. 
Applebee's is the bigger out of all of them. But then TGI Fridays was like, we trying to be a little upscale, but we still trying to have some fun, but we really can't compete. So I, I can see why they going out of here. We already talked about Denny's. 57 locations. Damn, Denny's. Boston Market. I don't even know what Boston Market is. I thought Boston Market was like an actual market that you went to. That's why I never went to it. Let me see what the hell they got going on. A rotisserie kitchen. This is the problem right here. Boston Market won't let you just go on the website. You got to verify if you're a human or not. Trust me, ain't no robots trying to get on this shit. A rotisserie kitchen. Yeah, this ain't nowhere I'm about to eat. Let me look at their menu. I can tell y'all exactly why they going under. Oh, you buying whole chickens? That's why. Ain't nobody buying no whole chicken that they about to go eat up at the restaurant. Yeah, we didn't have no Boston market in Kansas City. So I wouldn't even know what the hell this shit is. Oh, I mean, this is like some pilgrim stuff. Man, hell no. Nah, ain't nobody eating Boston market. This shit's only good around Thanksgiving. They got turkey, ham. What is this? Sweet potatoes with marshmallow? Yeah, Pumpkin pie, man, get this shit out of here. Ain't nobody eating this shit on a regular. Boston Market. That, that's why. That's why they going under. This right here, we got a place called Holiday Ham. Holiday Ham only opens up during the holidays. No one's about to buy no motherfucking... Big ass thing of ham and a whole fucking chicken with some sweet potatoes with marshmallows in it. Who they think we are? Man, get this shit out of here. That's why they going under. Let me see what you can order off of this shit. Fuck, we're going to order from one in New York. Yeah, this is some East Coast shit right here. Oh, hell no. Look at the macaroni. What is this? Macaroni spirals? Come on, man. Get out of here. The two meat combo is crazy. Yeah. We see why they going up under. Well, we don't know. The, we don't need to go too more in debt with Boston Market. This is already a, a no go. I wouldn't even step foot in there. Uh, Red Lobster filing for bankruptcy in May, disclosing outstanding debt obligations exceeding one billion dollars. Its cash reserves dwindled to less than thirty million. Damn. They had three <laughs> percent. What their debt is. Ahead of his bankruptcy, the restaurant began shuttering 93 locations with waning financial resources. Red Lobster halted payment vendors to payments to vendors last year. Whose uncle is this? Somebody in here. Six degrees of separation. Who in here is related to Flavor Flav? Rather, it's the second or third cousin. Somebody in here is related to Flavor Flav. Rapper Flavor Flav, a public enemy, famed, uh, fame posted to his Instagram on Monday and elaborated. Red Lobster spread. A legend to have ordered every item in the restaurant's menu in the last ditch effort to save the franchise. You boy! 
said he was going to do everything to help Red Lobster and save the Cheddar Bay Biscuits. Ordered the whole menu. Now, Flavor, you ain't got that kind of money, my brother. Now, my pizza. Now we're gonna we're gonna do a documentary after this. It's just I had to, I always wanted to talk about these food places going up under. This is more for the mo, you know. But since I didn't do a live yesterday, I'm gonna try to do a Tubi movie this evening. We're gonna do a couple of articles, and then uh, a documentary, and then we'll get back on here and we'll do a Tubi movie tonight. I told you I was gonna make up for it. My pizza. Now my pizza is pretty good. I think this is the one LeBron owned. Yeah, I used to go up here. You get these little, uh, you can get your own little personal piece over here. It wasn't even that expensive either. Get you a lemonade. Oh, boy, I used to be up in this thing. They weren't this hype when I was buying shit. They were yelling at me when I come in there. You got your order? No. My pizza confirmed 26 restaurant closures of underperforming locations in its first quarter. Restaurant business reported, despite the best efforts of the squads and managers of those restaurants, they had not performed well for some for some time, and that's just a part of the business," said my piece of spokesperson Rick Van Warner. Sometimes you have to pop out and show up. Well, no, sometimes you have to evaluate performance of your assets. Auto five, auto five of the Cullens took place in California. Van Warner made clear that the state's new minimum wage law was not responsible for the shutdowns. Now, if you don't know, in California, if you want to get some money, move to California. The minimum wage in California is 20 bucks. Now, there was a time when I drove past Wendy's one day, I went and picked up uh, I went and picked up 10 spicy nuggets and a strawberry lemonade. And they said they were hiring and they were like $20. It was probably like 22, I think. I was like, you know what I could do with $22 an hour just to chill? But then I was like, man, I, I ain't about to be doing no working, though. I could have just had all that money and been tricking that money off. What you do? Oh, I work at Wendy's, not knowing like I'm retired. They would have just been thinking I was a bum, but that's fine with me. $22 an hour to just drop some nuggets, flip a couple burgers. I would have been living like a king in California. Minimum wage, 20 bucks. You can't go wrong with that. I remember minimum wage. My first job was at AMC Theaters. I started off making five seventy five dollars an hour, and then I got promoted and went up to six twenty five dollars after my first year, and then I quit before, like, right before my second year. But, yeah, shit, I used to make five seventy five dollars an hour, man, and I was doing it, too, doing it big, $90 checks. Couldn't tell your boy nothing. Couldn't tell your boy nothing. But it says California fast food franchises are responding to $20 minimum wage by cutting hours. We kind of just cut where we can, he said. I schedule one less uh, one less person, and then I come in for that time. Wait a minute. We kind of just cut. Listen to what he said. We kind of just cut where we can. I schedule one less person, and then I come in for that time that I didn't schedule, and I work that hour. So you cutting people to give yourself more time, but if they're making the minimum wage of $20 an hour, but you're working that time, you're making more than 20 an hour. So it's actually costing more for you to come in. Oh, this motherfucker changed. Ain't that something? He didn't told on himself. Let's get out of here, though. He stated that employees were presented with that option to relocate to other operational units within the company. For those employees who were unable to transfer or chose not to accept a transfer, the restaurant offered them a severance package. Now, this is at my piece. I don't know how much that. I don't know what PDQ is. If y'all know what that is, we're not even going to waste our time on this. I've never, oh, this is in North Carolina. P 
PDQ. Yeah, we're not going to waste it. We don't know what PD. No disrespect to anybody in the Carolinas, but we don't know, nor do we care about PDQ. Outback Steakhouse. Now, my parents be going to Outback. They be going to Texas. Blooming Brands. Let me see what the, who they own. Boneless fish grill. I mean, bonefish grill. I've been there one time. Flemings. Have I ever been to Flemings? I probably have. Ozzy Grill. No. Outback, of course. The Italian Grill. Have I been to Carver's? I don't think I have. Okay, so they own four. 87,000 team members. 1,400 locations. Oh, she said they salary though. Oh, forget that then. I'm I'm scheduling them time then. Look, it ain't my job to save the, the business no money. My job is to make sure that the orders get taken care of. Yeah, I go to Outback. They shuttered 41 under, under I can't even fucking they shuttered 41 underperforming restaurants across this brand. Uh the parent company closed Outback locations due to a variety of factors, including poor sales, customer traffic, and financial investments. They were too expensive to revamp the stores. David Dino revealed in February earnings called that a majority of the restaurants were older assets with leases from the 90s and early 2000s. So you should have a good deal on the lease that's from the early 2000s. Uh, same thing. All right. Um, Hardee's. Hardee's was all right, but it's rare to find a Hardee's. Hardy shut down 39 stores in 2023, diminishing its footprint in eight states across the country. The closures are still ongoing in Illinois, Tennessee, Missouri. They, they ain't even got no other um, no other explanation. It's just, hey, man, it sucks, bro. We're done. I stopped going to Outback when they stopped making fresh bread. Hey, Outback, you say, hey, you going Outback? You spent a little penny, but Outback was straight. Tijuana Flats never ate there. It's a regional restaurant, so we don't. Really, oh, in Virginia, Florida, so it's probably the Eastern Seaboard or probably like Southeast. Inflation, even cooking at home, ain't cheap. Shoot, over here in Germany. If I go on base to buy food, oh, it's expensive. Hell, I'm walking out of there by myself, 250, 300. But if I go to like Aldi's, so in in Aldi's, people think that Aldi's is like a second tier uh grocery store. Aldi's is actually a premier grocery store. I mean, it's a German store. But yeah, you go to Aldi's over here, shit, man, you get good prices on there. You got fired from Hardy's. You know, I never got fired in life. I quit AMC. Well, I quit that because, you know, it's like a Rico was about to drop. So I had to get up out of there. I see my homeboys getting fired left and right. So, you know, I had to, without incriminating myself, I had to wipe my hands clean and get the fuck up out of there before that Rico caught your boy. So I got up out of there. Sonics, I quit Sonic because they tried to make me clean out the freezer after I was off. So I told them, fuck y'all. I quit. Never came back. Well, I got my last check. Then from there. I worked at Best Buy. I worked at Best Buy throughout the holidays. Shoot, I was taking all hours. And then I got my government job at Labot Anderson. Started there December 23rd, 2003. Worked there till May 9th, 2009. From there, I moved to Georgia. Came back to Missouri before I joined the military. I worked at the Applebee's headquarters. I worked at the uh, soap plant. I worked at a, a independent industrial uh, plant. Then I joined the military. And then from the military, I retired for five years. And then here I am. I started working at the post office, worked there for six months. And then from there, 
I'm at this job now. I won't reveal what I do, but I do do what I do. Oh, no, I don't shop at no Whole Foods ever since Amazon bought them. But it is what it is. Now, all right. So that's the restaurants right there. But all these is nice, man. If you go to all these over here, it's different. The only thing is when you shop in Germany, you got to bring your own bags. If you don't bring your bags, they charge you for bags. So I got I got like two big ass bags in the back. I got an Ikea bag that I take into the grocery stores because I can put everything in there. I got the one that go over the shoulder. It's probably like, probably like five feet. Got that one going to the store. Because all they do, you put it on the conveyor belt, all they do is scan it. They just go down to the end of the thing and you got to put everything in there. So you got to bag your own shit. There ain't no, there ain't no sackers or nothing over here. You got to get it in how you get it in. 